Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper and this is the Create Audio Nifty Bundle. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on chips. So chips is Create Audio's multifunctional module. Uh, it has two, well, sound sources, chip one and chip two. Chip one has a filter. Well, I personally wouldn't call it a filter because it's much more interesting than any other filter I've seen. And chip two has pil pulse width modulation for all its waveforms. So both of them have sine, triangle, sawtooth, pulse, and a random waveform, which you might call noise as well, but it's still capable of carrying a tune. So really interesting to see that. And it's got that LFO there as well. And I think personally that the LFO has the best applicability of all three of its functions there. So I would say get ready and enjoy the ride and I'll uh, see you back at the end of the video. Cheers. So just a couple of quick housekeeping comments here. I bought the Nifty bundle myself. So this video is by no way, shape or form any sort of collaboration with Create Audio. And I do need to re-emphasize that I've only been doing modular for approximately four to five weeks. So if I make any sort of mistakes, please feel free to point them out to me, uh, whether it's in the comments or in uh, reaching out to me directly or through Discord on the regular channels. Um, I, I'm still here to learn, right? So please help me on my journey. And um, well, Enjoy the rest of the video, I would say. So here we have it, chips from Create Audio. And I think that just from a from an aesthetic point of view, it's such a beautiful module, don't you think? So you've got your, um, your first chip, your second chip, and you've got your LFO. And they've got some pretty nice features and some pretty nice surprises up their sleeves. So um, how about we just dive in and have a listen to chip number one. So as it already says, this has a filter built in. And I think that that's something that we really need to uh, look further into. So let's have a look at how that first wave shape that we have, a waveform as they call it. So the first is a sine wave. I'm running it at quite low frequencies right now. So as you can see, the actual sine wave itself looks a little bit jagged, a bit digital if you ask me. But if I pitch that up to higher frequencies, you'll see that it smooths out a lot. And even though while I'm just scanning through these frequencies, you heard that it, it's, it's almost quantized, right? It's got that nice little quality to it. And I totally understand why they call this chips, because it's got that chip tuny sound just baked into the oscillators themselves. So um, I'm just going to go through these and if I then turn down the filter it does something you won't really expect. What it actually does is it just chops up the top half of the waveform and I this gives it such a nice almost 8 bitty sound to it. I love that. So let's uh, go back and let's go into a bit of a higher regiment so that we get a nice smooth one and do that again. And it does the exact same thing there. It just chops up the, the top half of it. And even if you put it halfway in, it does add a lot of color to the, uh, to the actual sound. Okay, well, let's go into the uh, triangle mode. So let me just find the best one. So again, if you go to lower regiments, you've got this quantized step approach, the digital approach, going to the bit of the higher regiments, it smooths out a lot there. But a better triangle shape than this, I'm not able to get that. But still, the aim here is not to get a perfect wave shape. The aim is not here to have a perfect oscillator. Um, the, the nitty grittiness and the 
well, the, the, the minor mistakes in this oscillator are, are features, they're not bugs. So we can just go through this. So this is the, uh, the triangle. Next we have a, a sawtooth, which is of course in the lower um, parts of, it's looking okay, but then the top half looks rather jagged, but still it's got a nice sound to it. Oh, and this is the pulse one. So again, if we see that, if I play with the filter, what happens? We always go back to that chopped up sine wave, which is of course perfect. So you can do all sorts of things in the middle. Even though it's not really a, a, a filter, you can do so many things with it. And then last but not least, you've got this noise, which is not actually white noise. It's not really pink noise. It's something. It's nice. You can do something with this. Okay, well that's chip number one. Let's go to chip number two. I start to feel like a game show host here. So what I've got is I've got the width all the way down. I've got it on the sign form. I've put it at the, the top. And this already shows you what you can do with this. So every waveform can be eaten up by the, by the width. And this gives it so much potential and use cases for this. Because how many wave forms with a sine wave you know that you can really chop up like this? This is a nice nitty gritty sound, I really love that. Okay, same is true of course for, this, for triangle. And as you can see this triangle looks already much better than the one on chips number one. But again, you do have that digital aspect to it. Sawtooth. See if I can make it look a bit better. Well, this is about it. <laughs> and then you've got your pulse. And then you've got your pulse width modulation, of course, that you were uh, you were all expecting. Really nice. So, for those of you who might 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 know that I've got a pocket operator arcade specifically to create these sort of chip tuny sounds with, and this will play along with that nicely even though this might be a bit of a harsh sound but if I go back here and you just do it like this so many nice things to do with that perfect so let's have a quick look at the LFOs so you've got your rate sets you've got your depth so actually the amplitude that you have so even if I put it up you can start to see the LEDs flashing and you've got again you've got your waveform so you've got your um, your reset, which is essentially a sync option. So you can just uh, reset it to the start of the uh, of the shape. You've got your out one, and you've got your out two, where out two is twice is uh, four times as fast as out one. So let's just uh, have a look at that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab chips two, put that in the out and grab out number two and put that in the width. So this is the, uh, the width, the sign shape, triangle. And then 
you've got something really funny, which is essentially noise. But I do have the feeling that this is quantized. So let's, instead of putting this into the, the pulse width, let's put it into the tone, actually. Let's turn this up a bit. So let's put it in the number one. So that sounds like a sample and hold to me. So this is going to give random values for every cycle that it goes through. So again, this is something that's very usable if you want to do really generative music, which I like to do as well. So I'm using this in uh, some of my setups currently in what I like to call a Krell light approach, where I want to have just random voltages, but that do generate, well, sort of in tune sounds. That's where this really shines. And this, this alone uh, will earn this module's uh, place in my generals, in my generic setup. And I just, I just love that it's so low tech, but it still has so much potential. And that's why I truly love chips, even though you might say, well, the, the oscillators aren't really clean. Um, the, the wave shapes are a bit distorted. Yes, of course, but that's the whole idea behind them. You want to have that nitty gritty 8-bit sound because that's why you want to play this in, in chip tunes. You want to have that approach there as well where you truly have that 8-bit that sound to it. You can't use this, of course, in your um, psychedelic uh, polished patch. Yeah, well, you might want to use the, the LFO for that. That's what I like to use it for. But the oscillators are not meant for, for really clean um, sounds. That's, what that's not what their intent is. And they've actually said that on the website that all of the background noise, it's not a bug, it's not a production fault, it's a feature. And you should embrace that or just consider that before buying this. Do you, do you want to have a, a noisy module in your, um, in your rack? Do you want to use that in your patches? I was surprised as at first as well, but then I thought, well, well this, this is exactly when you want to make chiptune music, you need to embrace that because otherwise um, you're not really making chiptune music, I think. But still, I love this. I love chips. And I think that Create Audio um, might have uh, called something a feature that was uh, not intended, but I'm embracing it. They were embracing it. So uh, what's then? What's that not to like, right? So uh, let's go back to the studio and let's uh, wrap this up, right? So I hope you enjoyed my review of Create Audio's chips. Um, please subscribe, like, and comment if you want to see all other reviews that I'm doing on the Create Audio Nifty bundle. So you still have, well, cells and the Nifty case to look forward to. And in addition to that, I'm also doing reviews on um, Erica Synths and I've got a Uruguayan module coming as well. So I hope you guys will enjoy that too. So for now, I would say stay healthy, stay safe and hope to see you next time. Cheers.